Hello and welcome to this video where we look at how to return non-adjacent columns in your dynamic array formulas. And we're going to see a few different examples of how to do this with the pros and cons to each technique. So using this table named TBL cells, we are going to use a filter function which returns the results of the product name and the total columns only. So here we are with our prepared report and we have some filter criteria in C2 for beverage category products only. And we want just the product name and total columns. Now there are two key approaches to do this in my eyes. There is the way of absolutely referencing the columns and the choose function is great for that. And then there's the way of relatively referencing those columns using index numbers, which is more dynamic. And the easiest way is to use choose coals. Now choose coals is a very new function. So if you don't have that, don't worry, index is just as capable. Let's begin with choose coals. So I'm going to write this filter function. And for the filter function, I need to provide the array to filter. And this is only going to be columns one and column four from TBL cells. So we're using choose coals here, you know, a function built for this job, hence its name. And if I use this choose coals, it requests the array, which is TBL cells, and then the column numbers. So I can specify that I want column one, comma, and then also column four. Close off the bracket. So quite an easy approach. Maybe frustrating that you have to enter index numbers, and we'll look at a more dynamic way very soon with the match function, but also not a huge issue. Just maybe a frustration, just like the column index number of VLOOKUP was a common frustration for many. Just finishing off this filter function for the moment, it's not the primary purpose of this video, but we would be remiss to not complete it. So I'm going to say that the uh, category column must be equal to the value of C2. And if I close off this filter function and run that, we successfully have only product name and total columns. And that's using choose coals and referencing using index numbers. But we can do this with absolute references using the choose function. So just coming back to my formula and I'll replace the choose coals function with choose. Now with choose, I can give it some array constants. So I'm going to enter one and two within curly braces delimited by a comma. And then I can specifically tell it the columns that I want. So I can say that I want TBL sales product name, comma, and also TBL sales and the total column. Close off the choose function. So many people may prefer this approach because I was able to take advantage of table references there, making it so easy to specify rather than saying one and four. Running enter produces the same results. Now, if you did have to specify many numbers for choose, we don't necessarily have to type in each one, you know, one comma two comma three comma four comma five and so on. We could just nest a sequence function in there and tell sequence that we don't care about the rows, but for the columns, can you give us two, close it off, and that will give us a sequence of one and two, or on a, a grander example, one to eight, for example. But you still have to specify those columns individually. So a nice tip, although I wouldn't expect it to be a hugely popular requirement. If you enjoy formula tips and you're enjoying these techniques, then check out my new Advanced Excel Formulas book, link in the description, which has over 500 examples of Excel formulas. It's awesome. 
Let's move on though and see how we can dynamically reference the columns. So I've got a similar setup here and the filter function half baked. And we're going to use choose coals with a match function to look up the headers so that we don't have to manually enter the column numbers such as one, you know, four, nine, seven, and so on. So bringing in choose coals here, the array will be TBL cells. And then for the column numbers, instead of entering them manually, I'm gonna bring in match and tell the match function to look for the headers in the row above here, range B4 to C4, this can obviously be much larger than this, but it is essential that they match. The names of the headers there must match the name of the headers of the table. Because for the lookup array, we're going to reference them. TBL cells, open square bracket, and I reference the header row. So referencing those headers and close it off, comma zero for an exact match, and I'm going to run this match function in choose coals. Ah, missing another close bracket there for choose coals. Let me add that one in and then we can run it. It's the same result as previous, but I have put a drop down list in cell C4 so I can change the total column to units and then it will return the units just to demonstrate the dynamic nature of this. And indeed, if I change the header product name to category, then it will return the categories. It looks silly in this example because we're filtering by category above, but you get the idea. We're not having to specify index numbers, we're getting matched to look up and return those index numbers. Let me just return that to product name and show that we can achieve this with index so if you don't have choose coals yet, because it is pretty new as a function, no problem. So I'm going to come up and change choose coals to index. I'll keep the array as TBL cells and match to return the column numbers. But I will have to put in another comma and for the row number, use the sequence function to tell index to return all of the rows. So I'm going to put sequence followed by rows and TBL cells, two close brackets. That's a little combination that is pretty cool when used together, just to say, fetch me all of the rows. The rows function tells sequence how many rows are in the table and sequence then generates the row numbers. So press and enter on this, same result. Slightly more awkward as a formula compared to choose coals. You know, that is why a choose coals was produced to ease the way that was done. But at the same time, not too tricky and maybe a little bit fun as well. Great to see functions like sequence and rows coming in and getting us over the line. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to receive the latest Excel videos. Thank you, and I will see you again soon.